Welcome to Programmable Controllers ELE 239 at Piedmont Virginia Community College. My name is Eric Bretter and I will be your professor for this current semester, fall 2019. Our course will be run on my website, ebretter.org, and the discussions and announcements will be posted on Canvas. If you'd like to follow along, this will just be an introduction to the course. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email them or post them on Canvas. At the beginning of my page, there's a set of all the courses I'm teaching this semester, my contact information and office hours. Any social media or links here? I'm going to click on the page for our class, ELE 239. The website is set up linearly and it will be posts per week, just like a blog. At the top, I have some basic information, our syllabus, our guidelines if you decide to come on campus, and an anonymous feedback form if you'd just like to give me some uh, constructive feedback. In this class, the book we'll be choosing is Programmable Logic Controllers, A Practical Approach Using CodeSys by Dag Hansen. It's a Wiley book. You can purchase through the bookstore, Amazon, or through Wiley. We're going to be trying out a, a small PLC, the Velocio Ace 11 PLC. It's a USB-based PLC, and it's cheap, affordable, and should give us all the basics that we need to get started in programming and understanding the hardware. You can purchase this on the Velocio website. There are a few versions. The Ace 11 is small and the cheapest and you can compare on their website. The data sheet gives you a more in-depth view of the PLCs that they offer, and you can compare them once again. We're gonna be using the ACE 11. All right, you're gonna need power for this, and basically any five volt, two amp power supply should work just fine, and that'll plug straight into the PLC. If you need help with this operation, please ask before trying. The last thing that you're going to need is a standard USB to mini USB cable. Make sure it has data and it's not just a charging cable. We need to be able to transfer our programs back and forth and not just power on the five volt rail. Okay, here's a quick one on Amazon or mono price. That's a couple bucks. You should have these probably lying around your house. We're going to be using CodeSys, which is an industrial uh, simulation and programming tool that'll allow us to follow the IEC 61131-3 standard for programming. That standard is to uh, help with software architecture, programming languages, and it is the dash three is specifically designed for uh, PLCs or programmable logic controllers. So that fits really well in our particular uh, application for this class. I'll move down into week one in a second, but first I'm going to go over the syllabus. Again, my contact information, my availability, if you can come on campus, I'll be in my office or in room 833 from 12 to 3 on Tuesday and Wednesday and from 1 to 3 on Thursdays. I will try my best to respond to email within 48 hours if it's specific to the class. And uh, if you need to co communicate with me in a different way uh, via Skype or Hangouts or some other video chat, um, just let me know and we can set up a meeting time and figure it out. Uh, this is an online class. I'm gonna do my best to post on Fridays so that you have the weekend to process the information and look over some things, and that'll give you a few days during the week to ask any questions that came up. I will post solutions most of the week if there is anything that needs a solution or uh, follow-up videos with information. And our course is designed to examine the installation, programming, interfacing, and concepts of troubleshooting programmable controllers. The goal here is to build a practical understanding of programmable controllers, troubleshoot and diagnose a few different uh, programming languages and the basics of the hardware, 
and we need to know a little bit about this as a system and not just one or the other entity. So we'll program, we'll do the hardware, we'll do sensors, and we'll come back and make sure everything is working. Okay, you should have taken some ACDC fundamentals for this course, although it's not required, it should help. Also, digital logic and microcontroller courses will help in making this uh, a more meaningful uh, course for you. Okay, again, here's all the requirements for this course. And as we go down, if you miss more than two classes uh, on this online course, that means if you don't participate in the discussions or log in uh, after a few postings, um, then we should withdraw you from the course. If you're not able to complete the course, please let me know. And within two weeks from this date, you should have the ability to uh, drop the course and get payment. After that, you'll end up getting a W on your transcript. And we'll try to avoid the F as best as we can. If you pass that date, then you will probably receive an F in the class. But keep in contact with me. And if something comes up and you're unable to make a bunch of courses, I'll work with you to make sure that things can line up really nicely. This is an asynchronous course, so you may let a week go by where you don't look at anything and the next week do two weeks of work. Uh, that's totally fine and up to you. You're welcome to keep up as you need. But again, make sure that you're keeping in contact with me if you don't log in and say, I am working on the readings or I'm working on this assignment or I'll get to it next week. Our grading. 20% is participation. Again, that's logging in and participating in the discussions. 25% will be the smaller assignments throughout uh, the reviews and uh, things related to some of the book work and the lab practices. We'll have some labs further on throughout the semester when we start to build our knowledge. Uh, we'll do some simulation and uh, building of some programs and then we'll actually program our PLC. Uh, we'll have a final project in the end to bring everything together and that's worth 15 percent as you work through this class i'd like you to document your work on the website at the top there is documentation guidelines for each of the assigned labs or projects list the major objectives what are you doing for that activity include any diagrams manuals data sheets flow charts technical documents uh, within any research that you've done. I would appreciate three pictures or so or screenshots. Uh, make sure the screenshots are done on the computer and not with your phone taking a picture of the computer screen. If you can, uh, include iterations of the project. So include some of the failures that didn't work and why it didn't work. Uh, if you're working on your final project, this is especially important to figure out your thought process as you move along. Any design files or code examples should also be included. Resources, citations are important and include some sort of reflection or learning. So at the end of each of your documentation or journal entries, make sure that you explain what you learned and why you think it was important to the scope of this class and what your plans are for the future. You should be doing this with each of the weeks and you're welcome to do this in a Google Doc or keep an ongoing Microsoft Word. If you have something fancier that you'd like, Google Sites is really great. Um, and you can keep your stuff going as you're working. That will be submitted at the end of the course as part of your final project grade. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, the rest of this syllabus, I encourage you to read through. And this is support on PVCC as a campus. If there's anything you need in terms of Canvas support, there's information right here. If you need any information about the general PVCC operations, just please refer to this or get in touch with me. Here's our rough schedule. This may change. This is the first time I'm running this online course. But this week we're working on an introduction. We'll then, we'll then overview PLCs. We'll do some of the software and talk about the languages. And then we're gonna dive into some digital analog stuff and then look at logic. About halfway through this course, we'll get into the programming or probably a little sooner, 
but we'll dive deep into writing programs here and we'll talk about a few different programming languages. We'll look at function diagrams and ladder logic. We'll build uh, processes that can recur and uh, the ability to use the PLC to time out events. We're going to do some simulation in CodeSys, which is the platform that we're using to program in, and we'll talk about some higher level programming. We'll do a project that will include your PLC, we'll build upon that, and then we'll do a final project at the end. I'll keep you posted. This may change throughout the semester depending on how things go and what people are interested in. So if you have some feedback, please send it my way either on the anonymous feedback form or just shoot me an email and I'd be happy to adjust and see what other people think as well. As we scroll down, we'll look at week one. In week one, I have posted just an introduction here, this video and uh, the syllabus and a few other things. Please make sure you watch this full video Go to discussion post number one and make sure you respond. Discussion post number one is just an introduction and this should take you right to the Canvas page. Please reply and add a few things in and read other people's posts. I will also be using the announcements tool in Canvas. So you can see I've already posted two things right now, one before class started and one today that encourages you to get started on the class. I would also encourage you to try to download CodeSys. Here's a link to the 64-bit Windows version and it's the latest version that I will be using. CodeSys is our programming environment and we can also do simulation as well. When I do examples we're going to use this. The book that we are using is specific to CodeSys as well and it follows uh, the IEC standard. Uh, so CodeSys does this really well and it will help us all formulate really clean and industry standardized code. But make sure you can just install and get it started so that you can at least get it rolling on the programs. If you're having trouble installing it or you don't have a Windows machine available, there are laptops in N833 and uh, get in touch with me if you need to do a dual boot on or a boot camp in, in Mac or something like that. Okay, this program is free and uh, we'll, we'll take full advantage of it. The last thing that I ask, start reading part one, chapter one and two of your programmable logic controllers book. This is about 30, 40 pages and this will give us an introduction to PLCs and it will also start talking about logic. This will be very important as we continue. Please keep up with the book reading. It'll help inform the projects and the things that we're doing. I'll also post articles and things that will supplement the reading as well. And we may jump around in the book a little bit. So uh, just be aware of that. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can email me. You can post things in the uh, Canvas discussion, and um, if you need anything else, just let me know. Looking forward to this class. I hope it's exciting. I hope you learn a lot, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Thank you very much.